prominent doctor, the perfect role model, gunned down in the parking lot. Gosh, we just saw the, we saw the homicide. Who would shoot Martha? This woman was the epitome of our community. Her ex-husband was a police captain and an early suspect. I was devastated and angry and appalled and of disbelief. But how do you investigate one of your own? You tore this police department apart. A city on edge, a police force in turmoil, and a family searching for answers. Have you ever looked your father directly in the eye and said, did you kill mom? There's not one person that had anything bad to say about her, nobody. And, you know, that's pretty rare about somebody. I mean, she really focused on her family, her work, being successful. She had it all. It was a little after 9 o'clock in the morning. She pulled into the parking lot. And oddly enough, it was a very busy office complex next to her van, got out and went through the passenger side of the door, and that's when the murder happened. She was shot, it was a quick scuffle, and the car was gone. Dr. Margot Prade pulls into the parking lot where she works, and she's murdered. What happens next? From there, it was actually pretty interesting because once the detectives came to the lot to investigate, they made a pretty big decision. It started to rain while they were at the crime scene. They decided to leave her in there and not move her so they didn't tamper with the crime scene and loaded the van onto the tow truck and then brought it to the medical examiner's office so that everything was where it was supposed to be and nothing was contaminated from the rain. They didn't want to lose any piece of evidence that they could possibly collect. Her death left a major void, especially for her daughters. It's so unique. I mean, it's not very often where you have a daughter that was old enough to recall and sort of describe what it was like, and then now be able to sit down and really be open about where she's at. Most people could never imagine. This is a girl who had her mother murder and her father on trial. She idolized her mother. I mean, when she talks about her mother, she lights up. Her dad was a strong man. I think she's always looked at him as the person to protect her. So I think trying to look at him in any other light really was a struggle for her. And it's, it's hard. I mean, you can really see the pain and, and how torn she is still over this. She has to sort of ask herself the question, what is she going to gain from believing in her dad's guilt? She's already lost her mother. If she believes her dad's guilty now, she loses him too. When Sahara sat down with Paula, she said, I don't know what to believe. There's not much evidence in this case, but they do have a bite mark on Dr. Prade's arm. Can you talk about that? The bite mark was a really important piece of evidence in the trial. When they were first investigating and they were looking over the entire crime scene, what they realized is they thought it was just a bruise. It was such a faint mark on her arm. And then they realized that it was a bite mark of the person that had attacked her. Where is the case now? The Innocence Project got involved with Douglas Prade. And they finally were given the opportunity to get new testing on the DNA that was collected from the bite mark because of the advancements over the years. These results are either going to confirm what they thought, that it is his bite mark, or it's going to eliminate him as a suspect altogether. So, I mean, this is really crucial testing for him because he could walk. He could get a new trial.